So our area uh, that we work in in my research group is in microfluidics. And microfluidics refers to uh, devices, systems that manipulate small amounts of liquids. So a drop of blood or uh, that kind of volume. And you can apply it to a lot of different fields, but we typically apply it to uh, biology and medicine, so the life sciences. One of my main areas of interest is in understanding how biological systems work and uh, specifically cells and cells like in your body are small and so with microfluidics we're able to make devices that have length scales commensurate with the size of a cell so let's say 1 to 10 microns we can make things in that size range and that allows you to do experiments on those objects, in this case cells, that you can't do otherwise and that sheds light on how cells work. If you understand how cells work, that directly has an impact on uh, medicine. So that, that's what I mean by uh, illuminating. Cells convey a lot of information. So for instance, uh, one of the ways to monitor progression of AIDS is to count a certain type of cell in the body, CD4. T cells and just knowing how many of those you have uh, tells you is an indicator of uh, what's going on uh, physiologically. Uh, in other cases what you want to know is what you know not necessarily just the numbers of a cell but what that cell is doing. Um, so for example uh, with stem cells which is an area that we work in uh, these are defined functionally they do something that's why it's that is what a stem cell is and we want to be able to understand and control what those cells do and we use these microfluidic systems to do that. So there's all sorts of information that the cells provide and it depends on on the context. Being at MIT, MIT is the best place to do this type of research, meaning microfluidics applied to uh, biology and medicine for a number of reasons. First of all, we're in the Boston area and this, the, the, the biomedical enterprise that's around us is unparalleled. Second is that it turns out that MIT has, I believe, the most activity in microfluidics of any university, I think, in the world. So in fact, there's people here who specialize in lots of different areas and sub areas. Uh, that for the most part get along very well. And so it's a great ecosystem. So it actually cap builds or capitalizes on each other. Uh, third, of course, is the students, postdocs, the, the raw talent that's around you that you can give problems that you don't know how to solve and not tell them that you don't know how to solve it, and then they will solve it. So that's that's always a nice feature of MIT. And, and then a, a fourth is uh, the ease and, and sort of familiarity that MIT has with commercialization, with industrial connections. So there's processes for both startups and working with established companies so you can translate your discoveries out into the marketplace where appropriate. Um, and I think the fifth one, which is a little subtler but nonetheless important, is that MIT has no boundaries for working across departments or schools, disciplines, and so that makes it very easy to set up programs where you need different expertise, and uh, that greases the wheels. <laughs>